hello and welcome to the show. I'm here in Forza Horizon 2. I'm going to be changing the silly car build slightly. Now we've raced around the uh, the Sister on Citadel circuit for quite a number of weeks. So I'm going to change the track that the cars are sort of raced around. I'm not going to use a normal boring circuit though. We're going to do a little bit of, of rallycross. There are only four scramble tracks, I believe, in the uh, in the rivals mode. Two of which are very short tracks, so not really not really ideal for this. The other two are sort of a sensible length. However, they are mostly tarmac. Both have uh, some gravel in them, but it's not as much or, or some dirt, not quite as much as I would like. Uh, but it's going to have to do. It's, it's the best that I can do with uh, <laughs> with this particular game. Now, of course. For, uh, for these silly car builds, we need a vehicle to set a benchmark time, which is why I'm driving around in the Zonda at the moment. This is the car that, uh, that I'm going to use. Uh, I could use a four-wheel drive car. It would be a more sensible thing to use a four-wheel drive car on as a benchmark time, but it's going to be a little bit unfair. I don't use four-wheel drive vehicles for silly car builds because, let's face it, putting 900 horsepower through a four-wheel drive car with race tyres it's not going to do anything particularly interesting. I mean, the Veyron, the Veyron SS has 1,000 and something horsepower, and that's still, that's fine dealing with the power. It's the brakes that are the problem with that. With the power, it, it, it's okay with. So, yeah, we, 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 we mostly use rear-wheel drive cars. Occasionally, we'll use a front-wheel drive one for this. Four-wheel drive is a little bit pointless uh, in many ways for this. So, it would be unfair to have the benchmark car as a four-wheel drive one. Hence why we are using using this Zonda, and I do quite like the Zonda. I, it's, it, I, I do like this, this version of the Zonda as well. Uh, anyway, on to the track. The layout that we are going to be using is in Montellino, and it is the South Scramble. It says a short, mostly tarmac scramble track, but it's not particularly <laughs> short, this one. Uh, all right, so we'll go here, we will get the Zonda. We're going to have five laps to try and set as fast a time as possible with the Zonda. That shall be the the benchmark. And then I've got a car built up and ready to go with a lot more power and is a lot more stupid than, than this particular Zonda. I had a little drive around this track with, uh, I think it was a McLaren 650S, is that the right name for that car? I don't know. It's just an MP4 with a slightly more powerful engine and looks a slightly different front bumper. I'm not a huge fan of it, to be honest. Um, yeah, I drove a little bit of this track. I roughly know, uh, roughly know it. Uh, oops, it will get the right, we'll get the right camera angle. The other good thing about this track is it's another one that you can't really cheat too much. And I'm going to do the best I can to stay on the stay on the stay on the roads not not take any cheaty shortcuts i know there are places like here you could actually no not this corner. i'm thinking of a completely different corner you can't really shortcut that one very much uh, if you wanted to Whee! we've <laughs> gone a little bit too quickly through that one uh yeah i'm not going to be jumping the corners uh, i'm going to do, do the best i can not to uh, to jump any of the corners i think this is a pretty good one uh, now we are coming up to the dirt section which will be interesting. I don't know how the ridiculously overpowered cars are going to fare down here. I mean, this the Zonda is actually not as ridiculously overpowered as you might think. It's only, I say it's only. It's only got sort of six, six thirty, six fifty horsepower, which is like half almost, uh, just over half some of the the power of some of the cars. Woo! <laughs> nope, get back in a straight line. Yeah, that's not. It's not hugely powerful compared to most of the vehicle. I think the least powerful car that we've had here has had over 700 horsepower. I think it's the Donkavor using that V8 racing engine. It's an area Latin engine. Uh, so, let's see, we'll, yes, we'll, we'll continue lapping. Um, so, yeah, it's not a hugely, ridiculously powerful car uh, in, in some respects, this. So it should be, okay. I say it should be okay over the dirt. Of all the cars that we have, it should not be terrible or not be terribly slidey over the dirt. I've right, got to be careful. Oh, that's a horrible corner on the exit there. That's a really, it's <laughs> a really, it's really deceptive. I keep, I'm thinking I can take. Ooh, we about break ourselves completely there. All right, nope, get back on the. There we go. Uh, that's, yeah, that's going to be a pain in the ass that corner. Uh, that, <laughs> that's probably going to be more problematic than this dirt section. Right, on to the dirt. But it's, it's no, a Zonda shouldn't do this. I, I'm pretty sure if you took one of these and tried to drive it on this sort of road. It just wouldn't. It wouldn't deal with it particularly well. Um, but we can. Oh, that the leaving the dirt is horrible. That is really not very nice there. Uh, oh, and then we've got, we've got a bit of understeer going around that corner. I don't think I was particularly fast through there. Hmm. Okay. I've got to learn the whole new bloody track as well. 
Uh, right, breaking into tier one is a pretty big. I think this is a little bit, a little bit faster track, a little bit more open of uh, of a track. Still, none of the tracks on here are massively quick. So we're going to be slow into this first bit, and then we've got to make sure we actually slow it down for the exit of this corner. Yeah, I think it, gets, it sort of gets gradually tighter, and it's hidden behind a wall, so it's quite deceptive. That one, ooh dear, we've got a little bit, a little bit wide on on that particular corner. There's not quite the same reliance on acceleration out of the corner as we had at the previous track. There was a lot. I mean, these are still pretty tight corners, and they're fairly slow corners. But it's not quite the acceleration out of the hairpins that uh, that we had before. It's the around here with some of the more powerful cars, I fear, could be quite interesting. And this leaving the, leaving the dirt onto the tarmac that was much better. I think you've got to leave that bit there very straight. If you're slightly on, sort of slightly steering, slightly sideways, you're going to have all sorts of trouble. Oh, ended up out a little bit wide. Uh, do we get? We don't get a huge amount. I say we don't get a huge amount of speed. 140. It's about the same. <laughs> At the same sort of speed we got uh, at the previous track. So, yeah, this definitely does feel uh, a little, little bit on the uh, on the faster side. All right, so we've got to be careful through this next one as it gradually gets tighter. There we go. That's much better. Through it well. As, uh, it wasn't perfect, but I didn't fall off the track. Oh dear, we've gone. Yeah, that's another. It's a few of these corners that are just deceptively tight. I think. A little bit tighter than you expected. Right, this one here, I've really got to make sure I get it slowed down for. A very nasty one, that. Uh, I can see many a car ending up in that wall on the uh, on the outside. Yeah, this deals with the dirt stuff pretty well. I mean, okay, you've got to be a little careful on the on the throttle through that corner, but otherwise, it's not too bad. And then we leave the dirt across the oh, the bumps and <laughs> still running a bit wide. All right, around here again. I'm not. You could slightly jump that corner, I think, to be a little bit quicker. I'm going to do my best to stay on the uh, on the tarmac -y stuff. We'll be down to a one minute one uh, as we go on to our final lap. Can we go any quicker? And a little bit wide and clomped a signpost or something over there. I think you could probably make or lose a lot of time through uh, through this particular corner if you get it right or wrong. Uh, I could also imagine, like we had a few cars having issues with one of the hairpins. The way that corner is banked, I could imagine a few cars having issues on the on the banking or that that change of direction through there. Uh, because I, I still haven't figured out. I spent ages trying to see what it was on that particular hairpin that caused problems. I could imagine that that corner could could potentially cause issues for some cars. Right, we're on the dirt again. Uh, yeah, not too bad through here. It's just make sure we get it lined up nice and straight as we leave here. Uh, that was better. It was better uh, across there. One more corner to go. Uh, again, another quite deceptively tight corner. That one. Yeah, this is a bit of a slower track in some respects than I thought. Ooh, we've tacked the curb there, and it has not gone quicker on that particular lap. So the target time of one minute one point six. That is what we are going to try and beat with the the silly car builds. We will uh, finish finish this rivalry, sit through some loading screens, get some money. Oh, well done! You've knocked over the sign. Come on now, you should be <laughs> you'd be able to have seen that. I know the Zonda's wide and everything, but you should have seen that sign. Right, we will we will go after the times later on. Um, okay, uh, this is, seems like a solid uh, a solid target time. Uh, if you like, the Zonda was yeah, it was a, it was a nice car to drive around that track. Uh, it had, it had, yeah, it had plenty of plenty of grip, plenty of traction out of the corners. Uh, it didn't slide around too much on the dirt. It was pretty controllable actually, uh, on the dirt, which is which is useful. I am not sure our next vehicle will be quite so friendly. I think friendly is a good word to use. Right. Uh, now I've got to go find the car somewhere. Uh, we're in S2. Where is it? It's hiding in my garage somewhere. I have too many cars. Uh, where are you? You there? We go. Ha! Huh. Here is the vehicle, the, the silly car build. It is the Buick GSX. As far as engines go, it is not the most exciting in this car. It has the Corvette Stingray engine, the engine that I've used many a time in the vehicles here. Probably the most common engine in Horizon 2. 928 horsepower, 826 torque, so it is a lot more powerful and a lot more torque than the Zonda. It is a little bit heavier, but in the past, heavy cars tended to do quite well. The SUV's gone stupidly fast uh, around, I think, the, the second and third place on the on the 
the, the sister on track were both SUVs. So having a car that's a little bit heavier, not necessarily a bad thing. Three thousand pounds. Yeah, it's it's slightly on the heavy side for a silly car build, but it's it might serve it uh, quite well. The main concern with heavier cars is, of course, the braking. It takes a lot more to get them stopped. Uh, where's the the statistics? It still says it's pretty good on the braking, so I think we should be. We should be okay, and having a little bit more weight may be good when it comes to the gravelly, dirty stuff. May give it a little bit better traction. Also, the tyres are very nice on here. Uh, we, we get this with the, quite a few of the the older American cars. You can have some, we'll see, that's the wrong one. You can have some lovely big rear tyres, three, four, fives on the rear, uh, which should give me plenty of grip. You want some big tyres. Um, for this much power, yeah, we should be about as good as we're going to get on the uh, uh, on the grip front. I think we could go; it could go quite well. Will it beat the Zonda? I'm not sure. I don't. I honestly don't know at this stage whether this car is going to beat. That it may have too much power and lose a lot of time on the dirt. We will find out. Uh, everything else in the car is uh, is completely maxed out. There is no silly wings to choose from. Uh, the bonnets are the two typical American car bonnets. That one that I don't really like, or this one. So we go with this one because I want a lighter bonnet. And this, but yeah, <laughs> not the only choice that we have. Uh, and the paint job, yeah, that's from the uh, from the storefront. Very cool flame paint job uh, on this one. Not very many paints to choose from for the Buick. There's very very little. Uh, right, I think that is about everything. Now it is time to go and get scared as we take this car <laughs> around the new track. Yeah, I have no idea what to expect from this vehicle. I think it could be, it could do relatively well uh, with some big tires and a little bit more weight. Uh, but I don't know, I have no idea how it's going to be affected through the dirt. I'm hoping we don't lose too much time. But <laughs> I have no bloody clue. Absolutely no idea what we're going to get uh, from from the Buick. I'm I'm going to hazard a guess that we are not going to go quicker than the Zonda. Okay, that is going to be... My, I, don't, I think it's going to be quite close, but I don't think we're going to go quicker than the Zonda. We will see how horribly incorrect I am once we, uh, once we actually get going. Right, okay. Uh, let's see if you can prove me wrong. Buick, did I notice... Oh, we do have a little... The rev counter is outside the car. Why is that? It's kind of cool. I, I will. I will admit. I think it's the GTO. Uh, the GTO Judge one that has the stuff. Why is it out? Uh, I'm not. I don't even want to know. Um, the, okay. Well, first off, we don't have excellent grip through the uh, opening. Uh, opening few corners. We are quite nice through. I think having perhaps the maximum width race tires on this car uh, is is pretty good. Ooh, we're not not really stopping for for that particular corner. Again, we are we are quite sideways. I wasn't expecting it to be quite this Larry. Uh, all right, on to the dirt. How do we fare? <laughs> How do we fare through here? Well, I did a rally challenge. I think it's the, it was the GTO judge. I did the rally challenge that actually was surprisingly quick when uh, when driven off road. And this thing, it is ooh, it's quite slidey as you would expect. I'm not sure it was massively quick through uh, through that particular section, but it wasn't too bad. Ooh, we're getting a little bit. Uh, <laughs> A little bit wobbly under braking. Oh god, it's not really like him putting power out of that particular corner either. Uh, right, across the line, the first, well, the first lap is never uh, particularly good. Please stop. Thank you. Well, it just about got stopped into the first corner. Hmm, it's not quite as, quite as nice on the tarmac as I thought it might be. It is, ooh, yeah, the back end is, is, is liking to let go. It does hook up quite nicely through that corner if I didn't get a big slide on and suddenly lose control of it. Okay, that's going to be a little bit of a concern. There are, I think there are less less harsh bumps, but there is a lot of sort of varying cambers on this road. I'm hoping that makes sense to you guys. Uh, right, on to the dirt. It's another big slide from, from the Buick. Now, we've got to be neat and tidy through here. Neat and tidy, neat and tidy. That wasn't too bad. Uh, it's probably better just to keep it in third uh, through here. And then very careful on the throttle. Don't really want to be leaving the dirt sideways. That's never good. Uh, right up towards this final corner, you do not have the brakes at all. Gee, that, that <laughs> there are no no braking in this car whatsoever. That is quite scary. Okay, one minute two point seven. We're about a second down off the uh, off the Zonda. Okay, yeah, the brakes are really surprisingly poor. <laughs> I guess that is going from a, a fairly lightweight Zonda to this thing, but uh, yeah, it really does not get stopped. 
not too bad through that particular corner though. This I've overshot that completely. We're not stopping at all for there. I think you can get away with running a little bit wider through that corner. You can get a better run into that next next turn, possibly. But yeah, that's not really ideal again. Oh, that is scary on the brakes. It doesn't really want to slow down particularly quickly. And then it gently does it round this next corner. Easy does it, easy does it, and then careful like getting all the power out the other side. This is where it doesn't really like it across the... Oh, no, that's not fun. Here we go. Yeah, you can lose so much time if you're out of shape uh, leaving the dirt section. That, 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 you could easily lose half a second to a second there, probably faffing around trying to get the car in a straight line again. Uh, the Ferrari Ghost that we're driving is two, uh, on two wheels through there. Oh, we've overshot that one completely. Damn, yeah, you really can't break as late in this as you can in the Zonda. Okay, one more lap. Uh, the pressure's going to be on uh, on the uh, on the final lap with this car. Yeah. Ooh, no, 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 no. Please stick to the road. Stick to the... Oh, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> this is what the car's like with big tyres. I'd hate to drive it when it doesn't have big tyres. Oh, we're not turning at all. We've overshot that one completely. God damn it. Um, yeah, no pressure. No pressure at all on this... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Please slow down. Thank you. Okay, on to the. It's not terrible. To be fair, the, the rest of the track is probably scarier than this bit of than this bit of dirt. It's not. You just got to be careful. It's just sort of easy on the throttle through here. It's the leaving the dirt that's the bigger problem. All right, straighten it up. That's better. I mean, we get a bit of wheel spin uh, as we leave the area. Brake early for this corner. That is a horrible, horrible corner. <laughs> Our final one. Okay. On to our final lap. We're going to go any quicker. This is the important one. All right, break a bit earlier. That was much better. We actually got it stopped that time, which is always which is always useful. A little bit of a hill there. Oh, and across the crest of that hill as well. Got to be careful. It's wanting to burst into wheel spin. Uh, pushing it a little bit too hard past the wall. Oh, I clipped a road marker thing on the inside. Didn't like that one. All right, carefully does it into here. It is a bit bumpy. A bit. It's sort of. You don't really notice the bumps, so like, like visually they don't look particularly bad. The cars don't particularly like it. Right, slow it. We're actually on for a good lap here. Slowing it down into the dirt section. Uh, I can't really attack this corner particularly hard through there. <laughs> Be so careful on the throttle out of that corner. Right, here is the scary bit. Straighten the car up. Now go for it. Uh, do we have enough traction? We do have pretty good acceleration. Brakes got to just break a little bit earlier than I would like. Oh, we've got a bit of wheel spin coming out the other side. This is going to be stupendously close. With the Buick, it's across the line. <laughs> it goes quicker than the Zonda by a tiny, tiny margin. Uh, <laughs> the Zonda is much nicer to drive than the Buick. It does go faster. Oh, dear. The <laughs> The brakes are just not there. It's not too bad around the rest of the track. The back end is a little bit lively, as you would probably expect, and the lack of brakes are quite scary, but it does go at 0.1 of a second faster than the Zonda around the Rallycross track. And I, I, yeah, I wasn't quite expecting that. Uh, it, was, it was pretty blooming close, though. Right, on to the straight line speed test. Uh, I would expect this to probably... It's not going to be massively fast. I can see that signpost is going to get knocked over quite a few times in the <laughs> in this if they're always going to hit that damn thing. Uh, yeah, as far as top speed goes, we haven't really got the ultimate power. We have 920 horsepower. Sure, it is a, an awful lot, but it's not as powerful as some of the cars we have used, the, the, the V12. Uh, engined vehicles and this Buick is not the most aerodynamical of vehicles either. It's not the worst so perhaps we could be getting up to sort of 220 maybe a little bit more than that 225 I wouldn't expect much more from it uh, particularly. I would also have a bit of concern at, at the high speed corners on here the back end was not massively stable at that particular track uh, oops, see, wrong one. Uh, so yeah, the, my concern would be weaving in and out of traffic. The back end may well let go, and through the faster corners, it may let go. It's also not the smallest of cars, so weaving in and out of traffic may be a tad problem problematic. Sorry, it's not the biggest vehicle we've had down here, but uh, I think it could be a little bit scary at uh, at a couple of places. Right, uh, we will just get through here. We will extend the gear ratio or fiddle with the gearbox until it's about right. Dump off all of the aero and then see what the game reckons it'll do. Right, quickly get rid of all of the uh, all of the downforce. 
Right, and then what do we reckon that we've got for top speed wise? 221. That was, that was pretty close actually. If we extend these any, can we get any more? Uh, 221. I don't think we're quite going to get the 225 even going down the hill. It normally only makes one or two mile an hour difference. So we'll, yeah, we'll be, we'll be pretty quick uh, if we can get there without crashing. Right, spin the Buick round and look oh, at the Yaris. And we are off. Ooh, it doesn't quite have the same traction as the previous few vehicles. So the, 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 well, the Land Rover was blooming good, but uh, the Monte Carlo we had was also pretty good on the traction front. Oh, the Lamborghini. Uh, <laughs> right, okay. We've had one bump already, not a great start. Yeah, the back end of this car, I'm just not so confident with it. I, could just, I can just see it. We're going to go around this first corner and we're going to be very sideways. Ooh, oh, it's, it's sort of a little bit floaty at these speeds as well. There we go. That's what I expected from the Buick. Sorry, I think that was a Kia we killed. Um, yeah, at the high speeds, the Buick is slightly floaty. It's sort of slightly imprecise on the uh, on the steering inputs. It's not the worst car I've had down here, but it's also nowhere near the nicest. Yeah, going to have to be a little bit careful, especially with the uh, with the bumps coming up. Oh God, don't go and fly at the scenery, okay, Buick? That's all I ask of you. If we can just get around the corners and not fly at any scenery. And that would be lovely. Uh, somewhere around here there is a horrible bump. And there is an awful lot of traffic to contend with as well. Nope! Oh dear! Killed an RX-7, I think. Uh, <laughs> well, the bump wasn't too bad. It was AIs changing directions that scared the crap out of me. Well, there's the... I'm going to leave a wreck, uh, a sort of um, a string of wrecks in my wake as we go, <laughs> go down here. How do we do through this corner? Uh, mm, uh, in the back end is just... It just wants to let go a little bit. Yeah, I don't really like the... It doesn't really feel very responsive at these sort of speeds. Oh, thank you for being a bright greeny yellow car there, so I could see when you were faffing around, driver tough. Oh, uh, another bump. No, please stay on. Please stay on track. Uh, please stay in lane, everybody. Oh, damn it. Ooh. The Alpha can't decide what lane it wants to be in. That's not helpful either. Uh, what are we doing speed-wise? Just up to the 200 mile an hour mark. Yeah, not not. But well, I say not an amazingly fast car. Yes, it is. <laughs> It is quick, 200 miles an hour is very quick in a Buick GSX, but it's not as fast as some of the vehicles that, uh, that we've had down here, and also it certainly doesn't have the grip of some of the vehicles we've had down here. Right, time to run down the hill, can we get up to the 220, 21, 22 mile an hour mark? I think we probably can. A couple of cars have actually run out of road, which I didn't expect to have happen uh, in, the, in the previous previous few. Here we go, 220 miles an hour. One more downhill section to come. Ooh, little. <laughs> Little dip on the grass at 220 miles an hour, nothing to worry about. Ooh, that's a small gap to be going for at that speed. Uh, come on, car. I would like 223, maybe we might get 223 out of it. Two, three, any more? Four. Oh, I can't get 225. 224 miles an hour in the Buick. Not too bad. Can it hold this corner? No, it can't. <laughs> no, not many cars can hold that corner at, full, at whatever their full speed is without the back end letting go. So, uh, yeah, not surprised by that one. Yeah, it's not too, not too shabby in a straight line, and beating a Zonda is always impressive uh, around the track. So, yeah, that's it's not too bad for you, Buick. Certainly not the worst car I've driven. Not the easiest on, on the traction front. Nowhere near as nice as the Monte Carlo or the Land Rover uh, of late. But it dealt with the dirt. Why is there... I didn't hit that car. Why is there a car pointing the wrong way? Ah, oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, not the easiest of cars to drive, but certainly not the worst. So it's not a bad start for for the uh, for the rally crossing uh, leaderboard. The Buick goes quicker than the Zonda by just a little tiny bit. However, that is it for this video, guys. So thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.